ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Welcome to Core TV News on the R. I am Martin Dixon. A bus conveying 57 Chibok schoolgirls that had escaped from Boko Haram was intercepted by the military in Biu, Borno State, on Thursday. The chairman, Chibok Community in Abuja, San Bido Abana, says the girls were being taken to Meduguri for safety reasons when their bus was stopped by troops who assumed that they were the ones in Boko Haram captivity. According to him, the girls were those who escaped from the insurgents about a week after their school was raided, with about 250 of them abducted. Another Chibok indigent, Peter Ilya, stated that information available to him indicated that 57 Chibok girls who were being taken to their new school in Kaduna were intercepted by troops who became suspicious of the huge number of girls in the buses. He explained that the military escorted the buses back to Meduguri, and residents who saw the convoy assumed that the 219 girls in Boko Haram captivity had been released. There were some reports in some quarters that the girls who were abducted by the Boko Haram on April 14 had been released. In a related issue, Nigeria's military authorities have denied reports of the release of some of the 219 abducted Chibok schoolgirls. Some online media had reported that the girls had been driven into the Meduguri barracks, quoting the defense spokesman Chris Olukolade. A few minutes later, the defense court has took to Twitter to deny the girls' release. There are indications that some girls were driven into the barracks in two small buses on Tuesday evening. The Nigerian military and their Cameroonian counterparts have been laying claims to the alleged killing of Boko Haram leader Ibrahim Shekau. The situation has generated reactions from Nigerians. Speaking on our flagship program, Core Digest, public affairs analyst Balazaka says the military should not be struggling to convince the public on who killed the Boko Haram leader. When you look at accounts now, you know, of, of the two different uh, forces of the two different countries, yes, it's good to, 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 to show your dexterity and creativity, but this is not the time. We are still on, it's not yet El Dorado. We are still on the path to achieving total victory. Mm. What, like, like, like he rightly said, what people should be interested in now is that mo m moral booster from wherever place it, it, it came, it should be sustained. And if possible, we should up the moral booster. It could have been by way of in incentives. It could have been through data gathering. It could have been through a system where both sides of, 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 of the continent or these countries are, are just getting tired. It's possible that they are seeing depletion in their total or general economic well-being, and they feel we need to confront this monster. A political analyst, Razak Olukoba, urges the Nigerian military and people in the northeast to be more proactive and vigilant so as to prevent further attacks by the insurgents. Instead of celebrating the death of Sheka, if he has actually died, what we should be looking at is how we are actually going to end insurgency, what led to it in the first instance, and for us to, be, to have that what is called eternal vigilance. And the government should be vigilant, the people in that region should also be vigilant, and the military should also be very, very vigilant. Members of the All Progressives Congress in the House of Representatives have staged a walkout after failing to get their colleagues to debate the controversial $9.3 million seized by the South African authorities. The bid by opposition legislators to force a debate on the matter failed after a voice vote that went in favor of legislators who were opposed to the motion. APC members immediately walked out on the House. 
I'll put the question on this motion because I've said we're not going to debate it for reasons cited by Honorable Kau. We'll not debate it, so I'll just put the question. If the motion is carried, we'll refer it to the board committees. My dear colleagues, those in favor of this motion, say aye. aye. Those against, say nay. Then let's have it. Senate has begun a probe into the $9.3 million seized by South Africa authorities from two Nigerians and one Israeli in a private jet. But it has also said the money belonged to the federal government. Chairman Senate Committee on Defense and Army George Sekibo disclosed this to a journalist after two hour long closed door meeting with service chiefs. He added that the Senate will address the media on its findings at the end of the investigation. And the death sentence passed on 12 soldiers charged with mutiny. Sir Kibori insisted that the Senate is not under pressure to interfere in a purely military matter. He, however, noted that if convicted soldiers could still get reprieve if their appeal succeeds. Senate President David Mark has denied making comments credited to him by the All Progressive Congress on the possibility of postponing the 2015 elections. He says in a statement issued in Abuja that he never called for the elections to be postponed. The Senate President recalled that on the day Senators resumed from their annual recess, he argued that the issue of elections should be addressed during a debate and not election matters. Senator Mark consequently urged APC to desist from misleading the public. Rivers PDP, in a meeting organized by some members of the Rivers State People's Democratic Party to express their views over the party's decision not to zone the governorship position in 2015 elections, was temporarily disrupted by a group of persons suspected to be working for the Nyesun Wikileg faction of the party. At least nine persons were injured in the fracas that ensued when the group of persons stormed the Delta Hotel in Old Giari, venue of the meeting, at about 12.30 p.m. and engaged in a free-for-all. The two groups threw chairs and other dangerous objects at each other, even as workers at the hotel watched in disbelief the action of the politicians. The faction of the P state PDP operating under the auspices of the concerned River State PDP stakeholders also held a press conference to call for the dissolution of the State Working Committee of the party chaired by Felix Obua. Calm had returned when a group of policemen stormed the venue and stopped the fight between the two factions. You're watching Core TV News on the hour. We'll take a break. I'll be back shortly. Stay with us. There is an Ebola virus epidemic in some West African countries. The Nigerian government wants you to be aware and watch out against the spread of Ebola in your community. Help keep our country safe and watch out for severe cases of fever, headaches, diarrhea, chest and abdominal pain, sore throat, cough, red eyes and bleeding from the eyes, ears and nose. Especially when these symptoms are found in persons coming into Nigeria from other West African countries. Protect yourself. Wash your hands regularly with soap and running water or use a hand sanitizer. Avoid contact with the blood, urine, feces or saliva of animals like bats, monkeys, gorillas, chimpanzees or infected persons. The Ebola virus is deadly. Don't catch it. Don't spread it. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information. The defection saga blowing within the Labour Party circle in the southwest may have started a new round of crisis between factions in his Ogun state chapter. Chairman of the party in the state, Neo Oshoba, and a chieftain of the Bode Simeon led faction are at loggerhead over whether former governor of Ogun state, Ben Gadaniel, has left his fold for the PDP. 
lajumo ke o latunji complete story The Neo Shaba faction of the party says it is not bothered by the recent resignation of the national chairman of Labour Party, Dan Wanyang, and the alleged defection of two of its national leaders in the person of Governor of Ondo State, Olushegu Mimiko, and the former Governor of Ogun State, Benga Daniel. The Ogun State chapter of Labour Party seems not to be moved. Oshoba, however, described the speculation and unfounded the defection being banded around the party chieftains. His Excellency Otmega Daniel, the former governor of Ogun State, and the leader of the Labour Party in Ogun State has not gone to PDP. Neither has he gone to any other party. He is still a bona fide member of Labour Party Ogun State and the leader of the Labour Party in Ogun State, as I'm talking to you. But that does not mean, however, that the party leadership and the ESCO in the state has not given the mandate to liaise and discuss with other parties in Ogun State that believe in our ideology as social democracy and that believe in our project AMG Amos must go. Despite the fact that some of its chieftains in the state claim Labour Party is devoid of rancor, the financial secretary of the Bode Simeon led group, Abayomi Arabambi, stated that Daniel's defection is true and a sign that the Labour Party is back to sanity. The decision, the SNSC governor of Ondo State, is a self personal decision if you want to join PDP. That's not the decision of the other 35 states of the Federation. You can see it is only in the those things they be you know happen on this issue. They want to join. They want to join Labour. I mean PDP. But one part I mean he, he led PDP to come to Labour Party. So whatever he felt you know sent him away from PDP. If he if he felt the ground is clear, the cause is clear for him to return. That is on his own volition and the people of those states that are with Governor Mimiko. It does not affect us here. Regarding the Agun Chairman and the Agun Secretary, we also have it on good authority that they also plan to defect with him. But that is not going to affect us. The OGD is normal part of Labour Party in Ogun State. It's an it's an entire part of PDP with Prince Kajamu. Meanwhile, political gladiators in the state have also begun to realign their objectives and position themselves ahead of the 2015 general elections. Olaj Mokeo Latunji, Court TV News, Abelkota. Reactions have trailed the gruesome attack unleashed on the Ikiti State High Court sitting in Ado Ikiti. The attack, which didn't spare lawyers, court staff, and litigants, was carried out by hoodlums suspected to be party thugs. They disrupted the sitting of Justice Isaac Oguyemi, the case deciding the eligibility of Governor-elect Ayodele Fayeshe. Rashid Rashid tracks these reactions and filed in this report. The APC and the PDP have been at loggerhead over the inglorious incident. The APC is speaking through Governor Kaudi Fayemi, who was on inspection of the damaged cut building of Chizi, described the act of the hoodlums as embarrassing, as the PDP denies that Ayodele Fayeshe has hand in the mayhem. For us, as a state, we are embarrassed because in four years, we have done nothing but to respect the independence of our judiciary. The case that came up on Monday was disrupted by angry equity people who voted but not really for Payoshe, alleging partiality on the part of Justice Shebun. Fayemi, the mentioned the show of shame, describes it as a slap on the judiciary. The PDP, however, expresses reservations over Fayemi's utterances and called his reaction a planned scheme to scuttle the swelling in of Fayoshi as governor come October 16th. Every right thinking lawyer must see what happened yesterday as an assault on his own profession and himself. And every judge, too, must be worried. Governor Kayo de Fayemi earlier had a secret meeting with the state chief judge and Justice Shegun Ogunyemi, where it was resolved that the swearing in of the governor elect should be scuttled through black market judgment. Fayemi also raises fear that it is about to be enveloped in another four years of crisis. A notion dismissed by the PDP, which describes Fayoshi 
as a peace-loving man who had no hand in the court invasion. And I hope this is not the path Ekiti is returning to. A path of brigandage, a path of criminality, a path of one week, one trouble, in which thugs and criminals take over the state. I unfortunately did not send anybody. These people, they came for long three day, saying that their hope was about to be scuttled, and they tried to prevent that their hope be scuttled. Police have meanwhile arrested six persons in connection with the mayhem. In all, six of them were apprehended yesterday, and as I speak to you, they've been charged to court this morning, and they are facing the music. Uh, let me also add that they have been charged to court on five count charge. One, uh, it has to do with conspiracy to obstruct the cost of justice, attempt to obstruct and prevent the cost of justice, causing disturbance in the course of a judicial proceeding, intentional disrespect to persons before whom judicial proceeding, uh, judicial proceeding is being undertaken and the malicious damage. The court invasion by the hoodlums will continue to generate more reactions within and outside the state as tension mounts on both sides of the divide. Rashid Rashid, or TV News, at Duikiti. Public and private schools in Abuja recorded low turnout as they opened for the new academic session. This was the situation at many of the schools Court TV News crew visited. Pyre Samuel reports from Abuja. This is the junior secondary school in Asokoro, one of Abuja's well-known public schools. Located in the High Broad District, the school has a population of over 200 students. But on a day schools are expected to resume in line with government's directive, this particular school looks empty. This block of classrooms are clearly not opened on the first day of the school year. We have really resumed. Uh, the turnout is encouraging because I never knew that students would come. With some other states are now resuming. Some schools, like Unity schools, are not resuming. So the conflicting uh, information is confusing to the students. But they came. I had at least close to 120 students today. The resumption date had generated a lot of comments from some quarters. And on resumption, the first thing the few students that showed up were introduced to is the Ebola virus. This student say she has learned more on the virus in school today, and she is ready to take precautions. Ebola is a virus that people don't expect it to happen. It is like it's like it appeared from nowhere. We got out Ebola from someone who is sick or dead. Now, some parents are still not comfortable with the resumption date in the FCT. Some say no adequate measure is in place to check possible outbreak of Ebola. But this principal was quick to reel out some preventive measures put in place by the authorities. They have really sensitized the teachers. One, we had some programs last week for the head teachers and the teachers. And some gadgets had been given to us, like the thermometer for checking the temperature of the individual and the the container for running water and some uh, what is it called sanitizer and washing soup liquid soup that are here with us then some flyers we are given which we had already pasted and we sensitized the students this morning that they should not be afraid of the virus it's not something that moves in air. Uh, it's by body contact, fluid contact. So they should not be afraid. They should tell their parents that we have really resumed. Even we had some lessons today. The government has already said there are no new cases of Ebola virus in Nigeria. And for the head of this school, it is a clarion call to maintain a high level of hygiene. Pio Samuel, Core TV News. Abuja. 
We'll take a break and we'll be back to continue with the rest of the news. Stay with us. Glad to have you join us another edition of The Political Arena, the most detailed and incisive political show. If you are a sitting governor and the opposition is able to stomach structure against you, that means you are wicked to the people. You gave me 20 minutes to move or they will shoot me. He has no chance for survival. If he likes himself, this is the best time to get out before he perish. The PDP is a rule of right to his faith. To anybody who thinks that government will fold his hands and allow miscreants to take over the streets of our own state and cause havoc, he's deceiving himself. The good, bad, ugly, and beautiful sides of the Nigerian political system. Join me every Sunday at 9 15 p.m. on 40 News. Welcome back. The United States and five Arab allies have launched the first strikes against Islamic State militants in Syria. The Pentagon says warplanes, drones, and Tomahawk missiles were used to target targeted several areas, including the stronghold Raqqa. Syrian activists say at least 70 IS militants were killed. Though Syria says it was told in advance, the U.S. says it gave no warning of the timing of attacks on specific targets. The militants control large swaths of Syria and Iraq. And the U.S. has already launched about 190 airstrikes in Iraq since August. Syrian President Bashar al-Assad says he supports any international efforts to combat terrorism in Syria. And that's all we can take on this hour. Thank you for joining us. I am Martin Sticks. And next is Core Digest. Hope you'll be with us. <laughs>